Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Noman live stream. Uh, my name is Adam Hartel. I am a recruiter here at Noman, and I will be your host for today's event, uh, which is going to be a great talk about how you can build your portfolio at Noman. Uh, we're going to be talking with um, one of our admissions advisors, Zach Mendoza, about Noman's foundation in art and design. Uh, so it's going to be a great talk. Uh, buckle up, get ready for a good stream. Um, our chat moderator today is Xander Poxad, by the way. And Xander is going to be in the chat. He also is an admissions advisor at Noman, and he's going to be on the ready to provide answers to questions as they come up for you. Is there any questions you have about Noman, um, our courses, anything that you might want to know, feel free to type that into the chat. And either Xander will uh, get to you right away in the chat, or he may we may pu push that question through to ask um, to the to um, our guest Zach to the rest of the stream. Um, so please feel free to start uh, typing your questions as they come up. Uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce um, our guest today. Uh, as an admissions advisor, Zach Mendoza provides guidance to prospective students who wish to develop their portfolios and skills in pursuit of their education and career objectives here at Noman. Uh, he graduated from the Art Center of College Design with honors in 2015 and has since worked as an illustrator, a graphic designer, uh, a painter with a growing, a growing exhibition history throughout California. His work has been featured in national publications, including Creative Quarterly and New American Paintings. Uh, so with that, guys, I want to welcome Zach to the stream. Zach, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, hello, everybody. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, Zach. Um, so I think, you know, right off the bat, Zach, could you just tell us, you know, obviously I shared a little bit of your bio, but could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your role as an admissions advisor at Noman? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, well, with my uh, bio that you mentioned, I'm a, chiefly a painter now. I've kind of done a lot of different things um, and uh, have gone through a program myself. Um, and uh, so I work more so with traditional media uh, at the moment. Um, uh, as, a, as an admissions advisor, um, what I, part of my role, a big part of my role is helping students to kind of discover what it is that they are kind of most passionate about pursuing professionally and, and figuring out how to get there. So some students uh, might require um, different uh, kind of solutions for what they're pursuing professionally. Um, so often um, my, my role includes helping students with portfolio development. Um, and in selecting kind of which path is best for, for them, given their objectives and their goals. Um, and so with uh, Foundation, which, which is our, the topic of conversation today, uh, it's uh, a, a series of courses that are designed also to help students in not only building a portfolio, but of course, developing uh, foundational skills that are applicable for any artistic discipline, whether students want to pursue uh, 3D production art, or if they want to be a painter or a graphic, whatever it might be. So um, the, the foundational principles of art and design are, are very important. And, and uh, most pros that, that you would talk to will, will stress the importance of revisiting those um, throughout one's career. And uh, so that's uh, kind of, uh, I'm personally very excited and passionate about foundation um, because I, I see the value of it. I see the importance of it. And it's, it's really gratifying from a, from my perspective as an advisor to see students work develop and um, to see all the hard work and mileage that students put into their work, um, showing results with, with their portfolio and, and uh, in their artistic de development. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that's really interesting is, you know, at least in my experience of uh, being out there, um, speaking with um, uh, prospective students at Noman, also speaking at high schools and community colleges, uh, not everyone is aware that we actually have this foundation in art design. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people when they find out about it are, are quite excited um, because it's something that you, that's, it's there for you to build your portfolio. You don't have to submit a portfolio to get into the foundation. So um, it's this really unique bridge sometimes for high school students into something like our Bachelor of Fine Arts program, but it's also a great opportunity for anyone who really wants to, to learn and to, you know, develop the skills necessary for a career in digital production, um, who maybe doesn't have those skills in place. Mm -hmm. So could you, um, you know, just before we get into a little more in-depth conversation, things like that, could you just sort of unpack an overview of what the foundation is, um, mm -hmm. kind of the, the different purposes it serves, maybe some of the structure um, of what the foundation uh, does at Noman? Sure. Yeah. As you mentioned, um, um, 
The foundation uh, series, of course, do not require a portfolio. Often students might ask about that, and uh, it's effectively a, a bundle of four classes per term for across four terms. So the, the length of the, um, the flat foundation would be a, a year if one were to, to complete it. And uh, it is, uh, so it's the curriculum builds off of the previous term, of course. So in the first term, and we'll get into the specifics of the classes, but uh, you have level one classes, more beginner level classes, and and then it just builds onto the uh, in the subsequent terms. Um, and uh, it's it's very carefully been constructed uh, by Noman's education team uh, to really kind of get students really good really quickly. Um, and so it, once again, the full length of the of the foundation is is a year, and uh, it is um, a valuable. Um, program series of, of courses. Um, it's it's near a full-time course load. So there's students would take four classes per term. Um, in a full, full-time program, such as the BFA or two-year certificate program, students would take five to six. Um, so the foundation, I would say, um, is a, a great kind of um, path forward for students who are either making a career change or haven't had as much formal training and just want to begin to construct a really um, stellar portfolio and develop these skills that they can use again to apply to Nomad's program or elsewhere, whatever it might be, but just to become really great artists. Um, and so um, there's, it's important to expect it's going to be a, a lot of work for a, for a first time kind of art student, um, but it's kind of the best way to, to again, get really good really quickly. Um, and so in, in the first term, for example, we have classes such as um, like figure drawing, Photoshop for digital production, uh, drawing in 3D, um, and drawing um, uh, the drawing fundamentals. And so right off the bat, classes like figure drawing are, are classes that not all students coming out of high school have maybe had experience with. So um, it's it tends to be pretty new. And Photoshop for digital production is um, kind of the first software class. And um, so it's it's uh, it's right off the bat, there's just incredibly useful information. I think the, the career of the artist is such that kind of all the information and skills that one would build are directly and immediately kind of applicable to what one's doing. So I think it's kind of exciting once a student is kind of in, in those classes to see the value of a, a perspective type class, like drawing in 3D. Um, it, it'll really kind of help to uh, inform um, designs and make compelling um, stories and illustrations in one's work. And um, so the foundation is uh, similar to, to all of Noman's classes. They're taught by industry professionals. So that's uh, another huge, I think, benefit of, of um, the of foundation. And uh, it's uh, each class is, meets once per week for three hours. So that's 12 hours of class time. And uh, I always encourage students to expect maybe twice as much of homework. So for those reasons, it can be kind of a lot, but I think uh, for, for the right type of person, the right type of student, it could be exactly what one needs to kind of develop their work really quickly, I would say. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think one thing of note, well, there's, there's a couple of things of note. The first is, of course, you know, if you're looking to study at Noman and you still need to build a portfolio uh, to submit to Noman, why not learn how to build that portfolio at the school <laughs> that you're going to be applying to? Absolutely. Um, and uh, I've got a slide here, and I think it's worth covering just kind of right now off the bat, because I think it helps to set the tone mm -hmm. for, um, you know, the, the type of portfolio you're building. It's it's not only this, the skills, but um, you're learning the skills and how to present them in a way that um, prevents, you know, presents a very robust portfolio and covers kind of what we call sort of these four cornerstones mm -hmm. of what is an admissible portfolio at Nomen. Uh, would you mind covering those four areas for us? Because I think that's also a, a real, it's part of the backbone of what we're teaching students um, in the yeah. type of work they're going to be putting in their portfolio. Yeah, the four cornerstones would include uh, creativity, so uh, really inventive works, um, technical proficiency, which is the kind of the, the skill component, um, and relevance, which is uh, if a, if a work that one is making demonstrates what they're pursuing professionally or yeah as an artist, uh, and then uh, refinement, which is how fully realized and finished a, a piece is or pieces are, um, and I think that's a, a really strong framework uh, for a portfolio because um, if a student has kind of uh, is, is kind of leans heavier in one particular area, what I'll usually suggest is that they kind of take a look at that the framework and we can make up a strategy and a plan to kind of. 
uh, hammer those other points, those other kind of aspects, those other tenants of the strong portfolio. Uh, for example, if a student has really beautiful um, just observational studies and drawings, um, perhaps that could speak to technical proficiency, but maybe not so much in the creative department or depending if it's more on the sketchier side, maybe not so much in the refinement area. So those, those sorts of things are, are kind of um, a, a growing and developing conversation and, and one's portfolio is consistently changing and, and being uh, works are being swapped out with newer pieces. And so um, the foundation um, does a, a great job in addressing kind of building a portfolio that's strong um, and, and relevant. Uh, obviously it's, it's at Nomen, it's taught by Nomen instructors who are professionals and um, classes like digital painting and character design. Um, there's, in, in addition to, I think what I usually encourage students coming into the foundation is that they take all the skills that they're learning in foundation and just apply them to their personal work. And that will instantly kind of showcase where students are interested in artistically. It speaks to the creativity aspect of it. Um, I think this is a general rule for all kind of artists, um, especially starting out, just kind of maintain a personal practice and, um, and just like a sponge, just kind of absorb as much information as, as one can. And I think foundation, again, is a great kind of um, structure for that. And uh, so that, that can be really invaluable for creating a strong portfolio, definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I've had even uh, students talk to me and uh, reach out and say, I want to hear about the foundation at Nomen. Um, I'm not planning on doing digital production. I'm applying to a different school uh, right. because I want to be an illustrator, um, uh, you know, or something that, that Nomen's not necessarily uh, teaching as our, as our primary focus. And they have uh, actually shopped around and looked at different sorts of programs like this to say Nomen is, is the best one that I've found in terms of um, you know what you kind of bang for the buck, but also the just the quality and the content of, of the course. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, I anecdotally have uh, helped uh, students or students in the past who are professionals in their own right and uh, maybe concept artists, freelance or whatever it might be. And they've opted to take a term or a couple terms of foundation um, just to kind of strengthen their portfolio. So a lot of these uh, classes are attended not just by foundation students, but other industry professionals too. Um, and um, so again, I think it, it kind of does depend on one's aims, but there's a number of different reasons why a student might so, why might choose to go forward with foundation. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, like you mentioned, bang for your buck. The, the uh, foundation classes are bundled as a group of four. So there is a cost benefit of taking them, uh, taking the foundation because um, it's each term is uh, discounted as compared to taking these classes individually. So that is often why students that, that want to kind of strengthen their portfolio might opt to take a term of foundation or more of the full length um, as from a cost standpoint. And if these are classes that they want to take um, regardless, it's, it tends to work out from that standpoint as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my screen share for now so we can just get back to uh, the two of us chatting um, because I want to dive a little bit deeper into, you know, some of the various questions that come up both for myself as a recruiter at Nomen, but also I'm sure questions that you've received as sure. an admissions advisor, uh, just to kind of delve a little bit deeper into what the foundation is. Um, and uh, let's see here, let me just scroll down here a little bit. Um, so one of the things that's really special about Nomen, um, as we know, is that you know the, our role of our admissions advisors is very different than a lot of other art schools out there in the sense that um, we encourage everyone to speak with an admissions advisor as step number one. Um, so typical experience is you have to kind of dot all your I's, cross all your T's, get the application ready, get your portfolio ready, and then the advisor is sort of that gatekeeper you send it to, and then you have to kind of stand back cross your fingers and hope that the advisor comes back to you with good news. 
Um, whereas at Noman, um, as you know, Zach, because this is your role, um, you know, our advisors are more like coaches and mentors. So by speaking with an advisor first, um, you know, you and the others on your team at Noman, you're you're actually coaching students in uh, the the their plans and uh, coaching them in their portfolio and helping them get ready before they apply. Um, and sometimes you'll you'll do that for for up to several months um, with some students. Uh, just free coaching because we want to make sure that everyone coming into Noman has the best trajectory possible. Um, the reason why I bring all of that up is as someone who would go into the foundation, for example, right. um, I know that our advisors are also involved with our foundation students. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about, about that relationship and how that works? Sure. And yeah, as part of the kind of registration process for foundation, there is an interview step. Uh, just as a, a brief overview, there's a, uh, an online application form. Uh, transcripts would be uh, required. Uh, and then there is an interview. And, and usually in this interview step, I'll kind of, um, kind of, again, kind of to what we have spoken about, just assess what students are pursuing, if they're in the right place, if this is the right fit for them. And also as a way to introduce ourselves as advisors, because the process, as you mentioned, uh, sometimes is a lengthy one. It can take a matter of months or even a year or more sometimes. It just depends. And I think that uh, it's good to expect that um, it, it'll take time. It takes time to make work. It takes time to get really good. And um, but but regardless of where one is in in that process, because it is a process and it is everybody starts somewhere. Um, I'm, I always love uh, seeing and reviewing uh, student work, and I, I know all of our advisors are great at, at kind of um, being able to coach students at any step of the process. So. Um, again, students that are just starting out um, might maybe have, haven't had uh, much critique yet. So I know that this interaction can be somewhat intimidating, as you mentioned, kind of keeping your fingers crossed and hoping for good news. I think critique is not necessarily um, good or bad news per se. It can just, it's just a way, uh, a, second, a second opinion about one's work and, and kind of ways that uh, it can be improved um, because there's always ways to improve work. And so, um, that is a process that is exciting to me. And I think for students that really see their kind of uh, development um, over the course of weeks, months, or more, um, similarly very rewarding and exciting. So I, I uh, yeah, I think that, that um, the value of that can't be understated. I think it's, it's good to kind of get as much feedback as you can. And, and um, at Gnome, unfortunately, the advisor role is pretty unique. Um, and when I went through the college process and all of that, it, it was different. We had, a, had my little portfolio and I nervously waited in line at a portfolio review day and then um, had a very brief critique about uh, my work having good color and I didn't know what to do with that uh, information as much. Um, so I think it can be a bit, um, it's very helpful to, to talk to people that um, you um, get respect or, or just anybody to get a second opinion. Um, maybe not your mom, because she'll always love your work no matter what. I've had that problem too. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, but yeah. So uh, so as a as an admissions advisor, we expect that the process will take some time, uh, and I think it's important for students to kind of have a good sense of um, of that too. Uh, a lot of times, students um, know. I mean, they're 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 pursuing kind of studying at Noman or interested at least in kind of making really amazing, beautiful work. And I think it's no secret that it takes a lot of practice and hard work. But um, but again, an advisor is kind of like a, a support person, a, a mentor that can help them in kind of demystifying a lot of what the process would be to get there. Yeah. And, and, and our advisors are available to, you know, it's not like once you start the foundation, the advisor sort of goes, okay, fine, you go through the program, you're on your own. Right. Um, you guys are still available to our foundation students as they're building their portfolio actively at Noman. They right. can continue to bring it to you because you know most they're they're in this to prepare to apply to the full time program. Yeah, um, not only is it a is it a, a available option, I think it's necessary. I think it's good to because um, students will inevitably get work directly from classes and great critique from instructors. But I think having the, the larger portfolio conversation is, is important because it can be slightly different. Um, if a student is just doing amazing character design work in one class, um, it, it's still kind of valuable to get a sense of kind of what their whole portfolio looks like uh, and could benefit from adding um, if there's any kind of glaring gaps and things like that. So, um, so yes, I, I think obviously advisors are, are available throughout the, the process and beyond. Um, yeah. And um, 
students, uh, I've seen a number of students that have gone through foundation. And again, it's very uh, gratifying to see their work improve um, tremendously. And I think a lot of student, I would imagine student um, success in, in applying and being accepted to Nomen, uh, there is a strong correlation with how often they talk to admissions. And um, I think that it's a good kind of, uh, it's also just a good practice to um, present one's work and, and the portfolio development process is a skill set onto itself. So thinking about those things, ways of presenting st work strongly is, is great. And obviously it's, it's something that is uh, important to consider and be in conversation with admissions about wall and foundation. Even. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll mention, you know, as well, also for those that may have joined us a little bit late, uh, we're here on the Nomen stream. My name is Adam Hartel. I'm speaking with Zach Mendoza about building your portfolio at Nomen, which is something that a lot of people don't realize that you can do. Uh, you need a portfolio um, and to submit a portfolio and to be accepted into our full-time programs at Nomen if you're going to you know, get a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in digital production or if you're going to go through our two-year certificate program. But um, the other thing is we have a foundation in art design that will help you build the portfolio you're going to need to submit. Um, and that is not something that you have to submit a portfolio to get into. Um, so that's what we're covering today. Um, Zach, I wanted to ask you what um, are some of the, I think sort of a twofold question. Number one, um, you know, there can be anxiety out there for people of like, well, I already know that, you know, just getting my degree is going to be a big commitment, both time-wise and financially. And right. there can be a little anxiety about doing an additional thing before that mm -hmm. um, to get ready for that. Sure. Um, but uh, another important factor is that, you know, the foundation actually has some benefits and actually helps you start into some of the, 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 uh, the full-time process with transferable classes and stuff like that. Can you tell us about those benefits that students have available to them? Yeah, absolutely. That's a common concern. I mean, students don't want to, like you said, maybe waste time, for lack of a better term, um, by taking another year in addition to a full-time program. But it's really not in addition to, because nearly half of the classes in foundation are actually directly transferable, at least into the BFA. And a number of classes are still transferable into the certificate program as well. Um, and just as a brief aside, the certificate program is slightly more advanced. So, um, but, but with the BFA, going back to that, the... Um, there, there's nearly half of the classes transferable. And so there actually is uh, mathematically a cost benefit if one were to take the foundation as opposed to taking them in foundation. Um, so it's 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 not as though students are, are kind of wasting time. They're uh, fulfilling kind of uh, transferable units while they're building the skills that will prepare them for the, for the start of the program, if that's what they want to pursue. Um, and yeah, com coming into into a rigorous art program like Nomen uh, or other schools, it's it's important that students have put in enough time or in in, in their own kind of personal practice or through a, a series of courses like Foundation to um, to just kind of make sure that they get the most out of that education that they're ready. So um, Foundation, yeah, not only prepares students for for being ready to kind of move forward with a um, professional level program. Um, it, it also contains within it classes that are part of the program. So um, classes like figure drawing, um, Photoshop or digital production, character design, among others. Um, maybe character design is not, but um, we have a, we have a, a transferable or transfer guide uh, in, in admissions. If students are interested, they can always uh, reach out. We can sit, we're very happy to send that over. So students can review that and and see. But um, but aside from that too, the, the classes that aren't directly transferable are still incredibly valuable. I know that there's a number of really high advanced sort of concept art classes like environment design and um, things like things like that. Um, they are not directly transferable, but they're incredibly valuable just for building, again, building a stellar portfolio and um, learning these really um, incredible skills, techniques and, and uh, instruction from instructors who are, are working in the industry. And so um, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely not a um, uh, kind of uh, a hindrance, I guess, or, or it's not going to delay, I think, one's studies um, it's, it's very, um, it's very much aligned with kind of pursuing the, the program. But, but again, as you mentioned earlier in the conversation too, if students are just trying to build a portfolio for, for whatever reason, I think, um, any, in, in the entertainment industry, the foundation series of courses are very helpful for that ultimately. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, even just for, like you mentioned, some of the, uh, concept design classes that are part of the foundation, oh, yeah. these aren't, you know, just sort of like preliminary little courses that are just sort of there because these are concept design courses taught by industry professionals. 
Um, so just the benefit of having access to that, um, you know, number one, uh, that that was training, you know, that when I was <laughs> looking to go to school and stuff like that, to be able to have sort of a one stop shop where I could get both the practical foundational art skills, plus right. the concept design skills all in one package uh, would have been a tremendous benefit to me. Um, but I think the other thing that's that's worthy of note is, you know, that uh, this is, you know, we know that at Noman, we have a high standard. Our review committee is, is looking for um, certain skills and understandings to be in place uh, through the portfolios that are submitted for admissions into our, our full-time programs. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, well, why, why would you offer a class, you know, in concept design if I'm going to study digital production? Well, because good digital production is built on good design. Um, so while some of those classes may not be transferable, and some of them, of course, are, which is which is really beneficial, the importance of the FIAD is to lay that very important foundation. Um, we've got a quote by Neville Page, a renowned concept designer, um, on our website that I love, and he, he, I can't quote it verbatim, but essentially he says, you know, if you're going to build a skyscraper, you've got to have enough foundation there to achieve that height. Um, and that I think really sums it up well. That's the purpose of our foundation. Um, yeah. There's also a benefit to maintaining a certain GPA level in the foundation. Can you tell us about that, Zach? Sure. Yeah. I, um, I yeah. So the the GPA kind of threshold. Um, if if one were to maintain a 3.3 GPA for at least two terms in foundation, they'd be eligible for a, a what's called the Bridge Scholarship. It's a five hundred dollars scholarship, and it could be applied towards the. Um, for the for the program, so students that apply for a full time program and have completed at least two terms of foundation with a three point three GPA are um, uh, they'll, they'll be considered for that. There's an essay component to it too, um, but that's that's great. I think um, if if a student does really well academically in the in the foundation, it's it's a great indicator of future success in the program too. So there's that benefit as well as a kind of a um, showcasing of of students' kind of commitment to their education because. Uh, in addition to, of course, training students for careers, Nomen is, is a university as well. And so academic performance is important. So sometimes um, everybody has a, a, a past. And if, if students maybe haven't performed well in high school, for example, or, or at a previous college, um, foundation is also a good opportunity to just do really well in, in the school that you would be applying for. Um, so there's that aspect of it as well. Um, and uh, I actually uh, wanted to circle back to that quote. I thought that Neville quote was great. And uh, I, Kikai, uh, Kikai Kotaki is a concept artist who's a, an amazing concept artist. Um, he said uh, that most of his time is spent practicing fundamentals as well. Um, when, when you see really stellar, amazing, beautiful, just shockingly great work, you assume, I, I assume, and many people would assume that a lot of time is spent in the software and it is, or whatever, um, kind of advanced techniques one's doing, but realistically, uh, things like atmospheric perspective, anatomy, um, value grouping, composition, those things are always kind of worth revisiting and hammering to make strong designs. And these are things that are directly applicable to ZBrush modeling or um, creating hard surface designs and uh, environment design. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's incredibly um, valuable and, and instantly kind of usable in, into um, the more advanced kind of artistic pursuits, I would say. Um, yeah. 100%. Um, in fact, we had um, Della Longfish and Rafael Grissetti from Santa Monica Studios on the stream not too long ago. And, um, you know, uh, Rafael Grissetti, of course, is an art director there. Um, and Della is the lead uh, character concept artist. And uh, I was talking with those guys and, you know, they have people talking to them all the time about, you know, how do, how do I get into a studio like yours? How can I, how can I work there? Um, you know, and so, you know, Della is on more of the pre-production conceptual side. And he's constantly saying things like study anatomy, right. um, do tons of figure drawing. Uh, Della himself is constantly doing figure drawing. I mean, he's already quote unquote in, like he's got a great job. He's in the industry, but right. he's doing figure drawing all the time. And, you know, you can go, okay, great. That's more illustrative. That's concept. But if you talk to Rafael Grissetti, who is, you know, paying close attention to the character artists, the people doing ZBrush sculpts and, and uh, 3D models of characters for the studio, he'll say exactly the same thing. He's looking exactly. for strong anatomy. He's looking for strong uh, fundamentals. And I think that it, just as you said, Zach, I totally agree, that can't be overstated. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a difference between an artist that knows how to get the software to do stuff um, and an artist that understands fundamentally, foundationally, what they're wanting to create right. and then how to get the software to do that. 
um, that's there's there's a night and day difference, and art directors will always see that in awesome. portfolios. So that's that's why we go after that at Noman. Um, I wanted to address, you know, kind of some of the uh, what I like to call elephants in the room. You know, uh, sure. these. Uh, we don't want to pull any punches. These are thoughts and questions that come up all the time in the field um, as I'm talking with people interested in Nomen. Um, and I'm hoping also that these can help uh, uh, help our audience also come up with some questions of their own. So guys, feel free to type your questions into the chat. Um, Xander, um, our other admissions advisor who's moderating the chat, he'll, he'll be answering those as he can. But also um, our uh, producer today, uh, Miranda, she'll be sending some of his questions through uh, to me to bring up to Zach right here on the live stream. Um, so let's, let's look at one of those really quick. Um, because you know, not, not that what I'm about to say is uh, a good thing or a bad thing. It's just an option that's out there. Um, I'll talk to students who say, well, you know, uh, I can, I'm, I'm going to go to community college to get my general ed, you know, classes out of the way. And, you know, while I'm there, I, I can try, I, I can take, you know, figure drawing and I can take anatomy and all those things at my local community college, which isn't a bad thing to do. Um, you know, you, there's still the question of transferability, which is something you'd have to talk to an admissions advisor about. Um, but, um, you know, if, if I were wanted to save money by taking some of those classes, um, at a community college program, um, what would you advise? How does that, how would that be different than what you'd be gaining from being in something like the foundation at Noma? Yeah. I mean, um, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's determined, dependent on one's personal situation. I think ultimately the classes at Noman are very sp specialized, very specific. And uh, if one were to take like a, I mean, there's classes just that aren't typically offered at community colleges um, as a general rule, like maybe character design. Sometimes you might be able to find something like that or digital painting classes. They're certainly not um, taught by the same instructors as at Noman. Um, but it can be a benefit, I think, if students have some experience with a figure drawing class or something, it's still very helpful. Um, and as you mentioned, transferability we, in admissions can, can discuss that. Uh, up to 30% of the programs are, are, are transferable. Um, we have transfer guides we can share and, and things like that too. Um, I still think that, um, yeah, the, the classes at Nomen, um, especially if students are interested in applying for Nomen, um, it, is, it is very helpful to, to be part of the, the school and, and to learn, um, get, a, get a sense of the curriculum. Um, and, um, so that can be helpful, but that being said, I mean, there, there are a number of maybe more foundational classes at community colleges that can be certainly very helpful too, like color theory. A lot of, a lot of community colleges have, um, figure drawing type classes. And I think if students have the ability, access to, to take those classes, they should. Um, and again, just, uh, these are all things that will be very helpful, um, for just wherever, whatever step one is in, in their kind of artistic journey. Um. So, um, so yeah, so sometimes it makes sense for students to take some classes at community college. Um, I will say with the GEs at Nomen, they, they are still, uh, they've been designed to still be um, relevant to entertainment arts. Um, the quantitative principles two class at Nomen, for example, is satisfies the calculus or a math, higher math component at a, other community colleges or colleges. And it deals with, uh, among other things, scripting in Maya and oral communication is a class that is comparable to public speaking in it. And part of that class, um, I've been, as I understand, is um, negotiating contracts and other things like that. So it's 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 dependent on, on again, personal um, kind of preference and, and one's background. So there is a benefit. I mean, you can students can take some general education courses. Um, doing so would, would help to um, shorten the duration of study at Nomen. Um, that still takes time to do so at community college. Um, it would prorate the tuition, so there is that benefit. Uh, and then the flip side, of course, is just that those classes can still be valuable. So it's it's all kind of uh, those are things that are worth factoring into one's decision. And um, so um, if if students want kind of coaching or advisement about what classes they should take at community college, we, that's also the, something that we do often. Um, and yeah, I think I think when students are just starting out, any any art class is going to be helpful. Uh, comp, comp and drawing or something or comp and painting or whatever it might be at a community college is going to invariably help them. Definitely. And it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely if, if, uh, if it's, if it's something that, that, um, if that's, if a local school is kind of the best option for a student, then by all means, take as many classes as, as you can and, and keep practicing those, those various muscles, anatomy, observation. Um, and even so, I mean, even with a, with a figure drawing class under one's belt, um, taking anatomy or, fig or anatomy for artists, which isn't part of the foundation, but as, a, as an example, or even figure drawing in foundation, those are uh, 
those are great to kind of add to even one's um, previous class or classes. So um, I, I think another thing about Nomen classes is no matter what one's skill level is when they, they're coming into the class, uh, instructors tend to be great at kind of pushing their work forward. So I've talked to a number of students that uh, I would consider very um, advanced and, and maybe have taken opted to take foundation as a, as a way to make their portfolio more relevant. So they perhaps have a degree in, in another artistic kind of discipline like graphic design or illustration, and they don't have as much or, uh, entertainment design kind of work examples. Um, so having talked to those students, they are generally very impressed. I mean, I, I've, I've only ever heard good things about how instructors, um, about instructors and how they tend to push students further in their work. Um, so, um, so there's that aspect of, of uh, the classes as well. Um, so it just depends on the student and, and that's part of, um, what we're, we have a lot of conversations with students about that. And, um, and so, sometimes it's a matter of, of access, whatever students have, uh, in their immediate kind of vicinity, if they have local work, figure drawing workshops, or if they have just the internet, I mean, no matter what it is, we can, we can offer suggestions about kind of resources and things that they can consider kind of really just get a leg up and, and start this process or continue this process wherever they're at. So, um, so it just depends. And uh, yeah, so those are just some thoughts I would share about um, generally the value of, of um, Nomen classes as compared to community college classes, but both both can be great for the right type of person. Absolutely. Yeah. And definitely, you know, both and is always the best thing, as much training yeah. as you can get. Um, I think for students out there who, you know, might not yet have, you know, delved into uh, some of their local options um, and are weighing out, you know, maybe I should take the foundation instead or, you know, what, what would be different about the foundation if I just chose to kind of put all my eggs in that basket as it were. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing I would definitely speak to that, and you've already mentioned this, Zach, is that, you know, all of the classes in the foundation are taught by industry professionals. Um, and that's, you know, that's to say these are um, instructors who are, have a high level of skill and mastery of what they are teaching you, but also they understand how that skill set relates to um, entertainment design, how that skill set is going to relate to digital production. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as you know, if you've taken, you know, a the same class by different instructors, as is the nature of art, there's different ways to teach the same subject. Um, so the advantage of the foundation at Noman is you're getting it from the same stream that you're planning on working in. Um, and that's, so if you're weighing out the option and you're considering the foundation, that is definitely a, a plus. Um, and Zach already mentioned that earlier in the stream. I just want to unpack that a little bit more. Um, let's see. Uh, so I think another thing is, because I've, I've talked to students um, who are in this position, they really, really, really want to do what Noman is you know, preparing students to go do in the industry, but they have absolutely no art training whatsoever. Um, would the foundation be uh, something that would be, in other words, the basic question is, can someone with no art background uh, find their way into Noman to train at Noman? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, I think uh, instructors are, are brilliant at, at um, identifying where students are at and being able to, to take them to the next step. And so if that's from the beginning, if, 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 if one is a, an artist that's just, that has always had a passion for art and they, they know this is what they want to do, or even they're just kind of trying to try it out and, and explore it. Um, in either case, it, they may not, may or may not have a portfolio. They may or may not have a consistent drawing practice, but they know they like this. I think, yeah, foundation classes are, are geared towards students like that as well. That students that are just starting out from the ground up. And I think that, um, it, uh, in, in that situation, it's, it's important to expect that it's going to be different because there's four classes that right up right away students will be taking. And so it can be an adjustment, but, um, but it tends to be a really quick one, especially if students are really, um, excited and passionate. And, and I think that, um, it's very, it's very exciting to see one's progress and, and, and certainly when it's very quickly and, um, and so, yeah, I mean, the, the first level classes are, are certainly geared towards um, first time students. Absolutely. Um, I think everyone's universally, everyone's uh, figure, first figure drawing classes tends to be a little bit uh, odd. I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh, projecting, but uh, my, no, I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> my very much was, uh, there's a number of Nomen students who this is their first, this is their first um, formal art classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that um, 
it's interesting because it's both beginning level, but it is, as you mentioned, taught by professionals. So it's kind of a, an interesting mixture of both. It's, uh, it's um, I think, worth expecting a lot of work and a lot of uh, just personal practice too. Again, I think uh, mileage comes to mind, just continuing to practice these things. Um, so fig figure drawing, again, is an example, um, just taking the, the instruction and applying it to just observational drawing just across the board on, on one's own, keeping a sketchbook. Um, just the more more hours that, that one can put into their work and commit to making art, um, the better the, they will improve that much faster. And um, so, I yeah, foundation is, is a great kind of um, way of starting. Um, and, uh, and also gauging if, if this is in fact what someone wants to do. So it's kind of both. Um, I think it's great for students that know they just haven't had much training. And also students that are not sure, just want to, it's, it's a good way to kind of, because it's near a full-time curriculum. So it's, it's almost a full-time course load. And so with that in mind, it's a lot of work, but um, hopefully it's a lot of work that students really are um, excited to um, kind of add to their repertoire of what they know how to do artistically. And so, um, so certainly, yeah, students, uh, I've spoken to a number of students that just started out uh, and, and ultimately ended up applying for the program and were accepted, which is um, fantastic. Um, again, it's really gratifying to see students just improve uh, over, because uh, really a year is not that long to, to I mean, it, it depending. Um, students can build a portfolio um, as fast as they can work, and of course, but but a year in, in, in some of the strides that um, I've seen are really impressive and, uh, and less, I mean, six months, whatever it might be. So um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's something that, um, especially with, with first time students, uh, but for any student, I think it's again, important to talk to admissions because uh, there's a lot of questions that will inevitably arise when students learn new things. Like what can I benefit from now? I can, I see this, uh, this weak spot in my training. I, like I, I'm drawing uh, hypothetically. I'm drawing these uh, characters, but they're really stiff. And I, I like the. I got my proportions down. I got the everything, but I, they're really stiff. They're like mannequins. How do I make them more natural? And so, the, that kind of uh, identifying one's kind of weaker points, um, th those those kind of manifest more and more as students kind of know what to look for as they're informed by more practice, and their their designs will will continue to get more impressive and stronger. And so, um, so yeah, classes in, in foundation are certainly kind of directly speak to those things that are just general kind of areas in which artists need to develop again perspective anatomy um and and design and so on so um yeah, yeah. and uh, definitely and i've you know i think the other aspect of, of that question um as well as you know i've talked to students who um are you know really aiming to you know be a technical artist sure. um you know in vfx or they, you know, they want to do some character rigging. They want to do uh, VFX animation, which you know it can can be fairly technical. Can involve some coding and things like that. Um, and but they've had no training in like foundational art skills, so no yeah. figure drawing, no anatomy, those kind of things. And sometimes the question will come up like, well, but if I, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to work in more of the technical aspects of digital production, is it really necessary? You know, is it really necessary for me to study these foundational things? Um, and, and, you know, you already addressed this, Zach. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, okay. it actually makes you a better rigger to understand anatomy. It makes you a better, um, VFX animator to understand things like composition, how to tell a good visual story, that kind of stuff. Um, but I think, you know, some of the folks that ask that also are, are thinking, well, I don't have, I want to do these more technical things, but I don't have any traditional art training. So therefore I don't have any hope of getting into Nomen. Um, and I think that's, that's the open door that the foundation presents to these guys. Um, yeah, I was talking with our, uh, um, uh, one of our education, uh, directors, one of our leads, uh, Max Dian at the school who, um, also studied in Omen and is, is a very, very accomplished artist in the industry. Um, and he was talking about just that, that, you know, he, the way he described it is kind of, you get two ends of the same curve. Some students have, are very, have more knowledge in a traditional art type training and need to level up in the technical areas and then level up in both while they're at Nomen. Um, and then of course there's students that uh, have, you know, very little, you know, art training, but they've been spending a lot of time, you know, working in something like Maya um, uh, or, you know, in, in VFX and those kind of things. And then they need to kind of level up the traditional stuff. And then of course, right. as you go through the program at Nomen, both level up exponentially. Um, what you were just talking a little bit about curriculum. Sure. And I thought it might be a good, uh, a good thing I can, uh, if I can get our uh, producer Miranda to share my screen again, um, I've gone to the Nomen website 
and gone right. And um, I know that we've got an overview of the curriculum as it goes in the terms. So, um, you know, just just quickly, if you wanted to kind of unpack the structure of the foundation for us, you know, kind of term by term, and I can I can scroll through these terms as we do it. Let me just go down. There we go. There's the curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, as we talked about a little bit before, but all the um, all the terms um, are great kind of precursors, obviously, for the next term, uh, you, like draw. Uh, life drawing and uh, leads into character sculpture, actually. It's kind of a, a leap, but it, it is <laughs> observational and uh, anatomical understanding informs 3D work or traditional kind of sculptural work. Um, Photoshop for Digital Production is a class which is an overview, essentially, of the software of, of Photoshop. The students do learn compositional kind of skills as well, and it's, it's, a, it's a great class. It's, it's great also for students that um, maybe have some Photoshop experience, but um, but again, it's a, it's a really deep dive into kind of how how to use so or how to use that particular software, and then um, in the subsequent terms, um, well, sorry, I don't mean to gloss over drawing fundamentals and drawing in three D. Those are incredibly um, useful uh, analog um, classes that um, deal with perspective and um, lighting, rendering, um, core and cast shadows, all the all the um, foundational principles that help to inform later designs. And so those lead into digital painting, which obviously takes the skills of kind of everything. So everything kind of um, is, is applicable to each later term. So I think um, sometimes uh, students that are maybe taking an individual class ask if they can take digital painting one and digital painting two simultaneously. Um, and uh, Xander, a fellow advisor, said that that's akin to taking Spanish one and Spanish two at the same time. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of, it's a good analogy. Um, yeah. The uh, so the, the curriculum builds off the, the previous term, of course, and so all of these um, kind of again, so an knowledge of anatomy, of composition, of perspective, are going to inform all of these later classes, and then leading up to I mean, term three, we have animal drawing, digital painting two, prop and weapon design, color theory, and lights. Um, animal drawing is informed by figure drawing, believe it or not, as well. I mean, just. Human anatomy definitely informs creature anatomy. Knowing muscle groups and, and kind of strengthening that observational acuity is going to just really serve students well across the board. And that's why, I mean, studios like Disney and such have figure drawing sessions and classes and workshops still, um, Pixar and, and so on. Um, digital Painting 2 just picks up right where Digital Painting 1 left off with more kind of larger scale um, and more advanced um digital painting um, explorations. Um, and uh, so all of these things, props and weapon design is, is obviously informed by drawing fundamentals and drawing in 3D because students are, are creating props that are usually often placed in a perspective of some sort and uh, and then taking them to a really high level of finish and sometimes working in a software like, like Photoshop to do a, a digital colored uh, rendering of them. So it's kind of, um, you get to take all of these various tools and, and combine them as, as time goes on. Um, color theory and light is something that I, I've noticed just um, a lot of students, or many students, not all, but uh, a lot of students have an aversion to color sometimes. Um, so I think that class is obviously incredibly valuable. That's another class that um, it's kind of, um, uh, kind of, it predominates a lot of um, col uh, community colleges too. I think that that's a good class to maybe take as well. But but at Noman certainly it's it's very much uh, relevant specifically and taught for entertainment arts as well. In addition, um, so there is there's a huge value of that. But but that class in, it undoubtedly informs um, one's character designs and concept art and, and so on. And um, so it's yeah again it, it, art is one of those unique kind of um, pursuits in which like all all of the skills that one kind of adds to their tool set. Um, can be put into practice immediately. Um, and so um, leading into like the final term, which is creature design, again, we, we, we spoke a little bit about these really incredible concept art type entertainment design classes, um, and environment design, vehicle and mech design, uh, gesture drawing. And it's, it's very, um, it's easy to kind of see how the previous terms inform those later ones. Um, and just how those, those skills kind of inform the later kind of skills that one would um, apply. And so um, gesture drawing is interesting. It's, a, it's worth mentioning too. It's a, it's a quicker kind of um, form of, of uh, figure drawing, but it's um, in order to simplify something such that it, it works, um, students have to have a really strong understanding by that point of figure drawing. And so, um, yeah, a lot of studios do um, gesture drawings to capture poses and, and uh, storyboarding is kind of, um, there's, a, there's an overlap there. And um, 
So it's, it's really interesting. It's cool to see like a, um, a freshness in one's kind of line and lyrical kind of marks develop when students become more confident with interpreting the, the model and, and so on. And creature design, of course, is um, there's a, a number of uh, classes kind of that lead up to that, obviously, that we've covered. And um, so it's... Uh, it's it's very much um, it's very, it's very important all the all the foundational principles that students practice in foundation. Um, these are things that that are um, important to all, obviously still continue to do on one's own with their personal practice and to start to get a head start with. So if students are considering foundation, um, I think it's a great idea even if they haven't had formal training to pick up a sketchbook, draw from observation, um, set up some objects um, that are interesting, and try to interpret them as best they can. Um, and, uh, and also kind of reference some of these classes um, and see if, if uh, students can kind of get a leg up by practicing some of these things on their own, pick up a color theory book, study a lot of that. Um, those are things that will help to kind of um, prepare. But, but really, um, as we covered earlier, the foundation is, is also catered, geared towards students that are just starting out. So um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think that the, the curriculum itself is very, um, it's, it's very wisely constructed, obviously. Um, to really get students really building a stellar portfolio and these skills very relatively quickly, I would say. Um, and um, so it's, it's exciting. I mean, these are all um, just principles that are they're really, um, it's, it's really great to see. Because you mentioned earlier, so some students um, come in with more of a technical background, others with more of a foundational art background, and they come to Noman because they want to pursue entertainment arts rather than maybe fine art or whatever they've been practicing up until that point. And Noman's a sort of a brilliant intersection of both, just the technical and the, and the artistic. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's both, and it's, it's really um, lovely intersection. And uh, so students, I mean, students come from kind of one side or the other often, kind of leaning heavier in one direction. And ultimately, students' work is so different. And uh, this is a kind of a tangent, but sometimes students will ask if they can see examples of portfolios to kind of get a sense of what they're what they're getting themselves into if they're on the right track. We I tend to we, we don't share student portfolios. Uh, one of the reasons being um, just that everybody's work is so different. Uh, if students stick to the kind of the general principles in the in the um, the portfolio guidelines, it, it'll make for a strong portfolio ultimately. But but everybody's artistic interests and skills it just they're incredibly diverse and it's really awesome to see students that have um, kind of hammered away at these things, applying them to things that are very interesting to them. I think it's similarly very exciting for, for them and for, like, because everybody is, um, and when you're able to put the pieces together, it's very uh, exhilarating. And uh, so a lot of artists that, that uh, one would kind of follow and admire an art station or wherever it might be, these are artists that have put so many hours into the foundation that it's just undeniable at that point. It's just kind of fun and they're, they're designing, but they're still taking it with a, a, a good deal of seriousness, the uh, importance of the um, foundation. Absolutely. Um, couldn't agree more. I'll, I'll just chime in and also just say, you know, uh, when sometimes when you think you have a word like foundation or a foundation in art design, or this is going to help you build your portfolio um, for your application to one of Noma's full-time programs, um, you know, this is, doesn't mean that there's somehow a junior connotation to this. This isn't like kindergarten at Noman. Um, these classes are really cool. Um, for example, uh, creature design with Kyle Brown, I just recently took his, his class and oh. you know, Kyle is very, very experienced uh, concept designer. He has worked at uh, Aaron Sims creative yeah. and um, he teaches an incredible process for not only designing your creatures, but then rendering them in Photoshop. Um, and I'll tell you someone who's already spent years painting in Photoshop, um, and designing in Photoshop, he uh, gave me a process that I had not considered before and the way that you work out your layer structure and what that does to create non-destructive um, color and rendering um, values, all that stuff. So an amazing class, but um, you know, things like gesture drawing, you know, this is something I'm interested in taking myself because uh, as you were saying earlier, Zach, you know, uh, you can have really cool ideas and cool designs and then you put those designs into a character and your character just looks stiff. Um, even the poses of your character can look stiff. And, and a, a big thing about getting a design across or getting an attitude across in a character design is is posture. And something like gesture drawing just helps you put that spark, that sense of movement um, and aliveness um, into your characters. I mean, I could geek out on these classes all day, but I'll just mention a couple of others. Um, character sculpture. Um, this is a oh, yeah. character sculpture class in real clay. 
and you're working with um, an instructor by the name of John Brown, who is, has decades experience uh, sculpting characters for entertainment in clay. He's also an, an accomplished uh, sculptor himself doing exhibits. Um, and, you know, uh, even in the picture right here, I don't know how well you can make that out. Uh, you can see most of the sculpts in there are full body characters. Um, and then you've got one in the background that's more of a life-size bust. Uh, the full body, body characters are like, you know, uh, character sculpture one at Noman. Right. Um, and when I bring students through on tours and tell them that, you can see them like take two steps back and their jaws drop. And you can see the, the eyes glaze over because they think, oh my gosh, you know, if that was the first sculpture class, whatever student that made that is light years beyond me. I could never accomplish that myself. Um, and it's just not true. Um, the way that John runs his class is it's actually about the mileage. Like you said earlier, Zach, um, he, you put a lot of mileage in and some of these students are, are doing full character sculpts and it's literally their first time touching clay. I think many um, of them, yeah, it's their, their first time touching clay. And absolutely. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, just, just to say, you know, I, I wanted to dispel any thoughts out there that might be like, oh, well, you know, I kind of gloss over these things because it's it's just foundational to to the real thing. Well, the real thing is built on this stuff. Um, you know, and you've got Neville Page's quote right down there at the bottom, actually, <laughs> about our foundation program. Um, so let's see. Um, I will uh, I'll go ahead and turn off my screen share. Um, and I think we've got a few questions that have uh, built up. We've got a little bit of a backlog of questions right now. So let me pull this up really quick. Um, and by the way, Zach, thank you for, for unpacking this so eloquently for us. Um, it's just really helpful often to talk to a human being who understands it from a higher altitude and can oh, kind of put those pieces together. Um, not to mention the fact that this is your, this is part of your specialty of what you do at Noman. Um, let's see, uh, one question that came in was, um, it, just one of our viewers uh, curious about, um, and you know, the answer to this question might be multifaceted. It might not be as simple as this, but about what percentage of students who make it into the BFA at Noman program or the BFA program at Noman have done the foundation course? Oh, that's a great question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I don't know the exact um, percentage or the, the exact uh, breakdown. Um, but I would say it's a it's a um, fairly sizable contingent now. Um, it's it's not the predominant um, path yet. I mean, there's still a lot of students that either come from another program or have uh, a, a different background. Um, but it is it is certainly uh, each term has a number of foundation students. I would say from from what I've observed that have gone through the foundation program and uh, into to a full time program. I think it's certainly um, obviously a great way to prepare. Um, and I would say that the success rate is very high for foundation. Uh, having complete one caveat of that is, um, and this would be an elephant in the room too, I would imagine, is having completed foundation doesn't guarantee one's accept, uh, being, uh, being able to be accepted into the full-time program. It's a huge advantage, um, but there are situations in which students might do enough for a class but don't really take it any further on their own or just haven't really kind of um, prepared enough um, outside of class. So I think... That's that's why it's important to stress kind of just using foundation as a as a guide and also, but likely if students do well in classes they'll probably be very close to um, being on track for being admissible for the full time programs. Um, so I'd say the success rate's very high from foundation to the full time program, very high. Um, but I don't know the exact um, kind of percentage of applicants that are directly from foundation. Yeah, and I think the way you flip that around a little bit is really is really more to the point. Um, because, you know, not everyone who applies to the BFA at Noman uh, has no foundational training, you know. Right. Uh, you know, the foundation is there for, for those who need it, for right. those who, who see um, that they need that leverage, that they need the advantage that it presents. Um, so really the question is more, you know, the success of those who do take the foundation um, than moving to the BFA. And then you, you brought up a really good elephant in the room. Yeah. That I was going to ask a little bit later is, you know, okay, well, you know, is the foundation just my ticket into the full-time program? If I, if I take the foundation, you know, and finish all the classes and pass them, then that means I just get into the BFA, right? Well, no, I mean, all of it ultimately boils down to how you utilize the training that you've received and how well you engage it. Um, and the, the Occam's razor, the, the, the fundamental thing to being a, a student at Noman is about your drive and your motivation right. um, as an artist, what you do with the training that you receive. Um, art is not arbitrary like that. It's not, well, if I do A, B, then I automatically get C. So, you know, what the foundation presents 
is um, something for someone who's very motivated and gives them a tremendous amount of leverage um, that they can apply themselves to. But at the end of the day, it's, it's how you've applied yourself to it um, will determine the kind of portfolio you're going to create as a result will determine what you have to present of yourself um, by applying to the full-time program. Um, so yeah, you said it well, Zach, it's, it's an amazing advantage. It's not a free ticket <laughs> into, right. into our full-time programs, but the advantage and leverage that it provides is tremendous. And it's also something that's been curated and fine tuned by the school who is running those full-time programs. Um, all right. So let's see here. Let's see if we have a couple more questions that have come in yet. Um, oh, can international students take the foundation course? That's, That's a great question coming question. from the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Traditionally, or up until recently, uh, that wasn't a possibility because, um, well, the Noman's uh, foundation courses are essentially a bundle of individual courses. Um, and um, so the, the full-time programs are, are ones that are synonymous with international students studying. Um, but um but, but more recently, because of the lockdown, Noman's entire curriculum has shifted online. And fortunately for um, incoming prospective students and um, current students, Noman's utilized a robust online platform for more than, more than 10 years. So it's been a fairly um, easy, simple, and smooth transition to online. And so at least for the time being, with the, the fall term has recently been announced that it will be online. Um, so it is, uh, at least for the fall term, and, and it remains to be seen for the subsequent terms, um, feasible for international students to take uh, at least the fall term if they wanted to. Uh, this actually brings another uh, point up too, is uh, because um, foundation classes are, are individual courses essentially as a bundle, um, they're what's considered modular. Um, so students can select one term, two terms, three terms, or all four. Um, and so with that in mind, if there's a particular term that students really can benefit from, um, this is not as common, but if students have a lot of figure drawing experience, they know how to use Photoshop, whatever it might be, really just want to jump into that second term and take the character sculpture class, and digital painting, and so on, they can do that too. Um, so that is uh, not to get out too, too much off track, but that's something that, that's an option. And, and yes, presently, um, Foundation uh, is, a, uh, is available for, online, or for international students because it's being offered online. Another stipulation of that is the fact that um, all of the classes take place live once per week and are not pre-recorded. Um, they're capped at 18 students or less, which allows the benefit of students and instructors to get kind of close to a one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, interaction. Um, one of the, the um, difficulties with that sometimes with international students is that there's a time difference often. And so um, that's something to take into account as well. We have a number of international students that are studying presently. Um, and um, this is just something that, that is also worth mentioning, of course. And this is something that will be brought up if when students talk to admissions. Um, but, um, but yeah, at the moment, it's, it's definitely available for um, international students. And, uh, and the winter term still remains to be seen at this point. Awesome. Um, we've got, uh, let's see. Um, sorry. We've got another viewer that's asking a question about um, you know, our, our online platform, which we're utilizing uh, for more of the hands-on classes for something like uh, clay sculpture. Um, how do we go about uh, teaching people sculpture and clay uh, through distance learning? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's come up a couple times. Uh, I've tried to get some data on this and I've been able to speak to only one current foundation student, but fortunately it was a very pleasant experience in this particular student's case. Um, one of the kind of, I guess, conveniences of working from home is if a student has a dedicated space or can make a, a space on a table or something, um, it actually allows for students to kind of really sometimes put in more time because there's not, this, this particular student mentioned transit when she was, uh, she, she took, I think the first character sculpture class and I, I don't know, she has some experience at least being on campus. Um, she was saying that, um, having not to not having to transport it is, is huge. She doesn't have to worry about it um, somewhat melting in a, in a 90 degree car. Um, but uh, she can just kind of set up a dedicated space in her home and work. Um, so all the foundation students I've spoken to have said that the classes they're taking is um, is comparable. It's, it's great. Every, everything's going well. But I have a pretty limited sample size of, I think, several students. But uh, all the foundation students I'm in contact with, I try to kind of gauge that. And across the board, it's been um, a smooth transition, fortunately. But, uh, but that is a class that I think comes to mind. I, I had my curiosities about um, what that class was like digitally. Um, at least from the person I spoke to, it was good. And I think, um, I think that it's still, um, um, it's going to be the same instruction, of course, uh, it's just a slightly different, uh, means of presenting the instruction, but, um, 
but it is all the same rules apply, putting enough hours um, outside of class, in class, um, and students can expect to have really compelling um, sculpts by the end of it if they, if they do just that, if, they, if they're putting in the hours. And so that applies, of course, to the online instruction too. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it, there's some interesting conveniences that, are, uh, that I hadn't considered um, that um, yeah, are slightly different than being on campus. Um, and some students obviously prefer the on-campus experience. It just depends. But, um, but at Noman, it's very unique. And I would say that um, there is there's a video on Noman's homepage that kind of details and overviews what the online experience is like. And I think it's very helpful. Um, it's very intuitive. Um, and so, which is especially important for classes like uh, figure drawing or, or uh, digital, or excuse me, um, char um, character sculpture. Um, and so, um, so yeah, I've, I've been in contact with a number of foundation students that have um, had positive experiences with the online classes. And I think a huge reason for that is just the, just the fact that Nomen's had this platform already for many years. So it's, it's been a smooth transition and uh, um, any questions I think along the way have been kind of hammered out and worked out and students have a lot of resources at their disposal to kind of um, get the tools they need and uh, kind of prepare for each class. Definitely. And, you know, of course, taking classes at Noman, whether you're on campus or whether you're, you're um, socially distanced online, um, you know, you've got to, you still have to get your materials and, you know, purchase your materials and things like that. I think the difference is, you know, you're just, you're bringing those materials home or you're, you're getting those materials ordered to your home. Um, but the other thing that's important to know is, um, you know, with the Noman classes that I've taken, um, and as I know with, with all of our classes, the, the bulk of the work is of your work as an artist is done outside of the classroom. Um, the class sessions um, involve a critique of the work that you've been doing. Um, they involve um, instruction as well as demonstrations by the instructor. Um, but then, you know, the students are expected to spend, you know, hours outside of the class implementing that instruction and working on on their assignment um, or the particular piece that they're refining in context of the class. Um, just by way of example, um, this speaks to this speaks to the value of matching high drive and motivation with high level of instruction. Um, that, that sculpture class with our instructor, John Brown, um, when I do show um, prospective students the level of work coming out of his class, and then I tell them, you know, this was this student's first clay sculpture ever you know, they immediately distance themselves from that prospect because they, I can't do that. Um, and it's, it's just not so because what John expects of all of his students is outside of the three hours of instruction and critique that they receive in lab with him, that his students are spending um, up to 20 hours a week on their sculpture outside of the classroom. And he will, he has told me, you know, at the end of the day, the, 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 the separator in the, in the quality of work that comes in from the students is not just how naturally talented that student is, it's the number of hours that they put in. Um, and he's had students come to him and say, you know, I just don't feel like I got it. And you go, well, how much time did you put in? Oh, I could only put in five hours this week. And he's like, well, that's why. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, and I, that's really important to know because uh, sometimes people can be intimidated by the level of work that they see coming from the students and assume that that's the level of work that has to be in their portfolio. No, that's what you're learning by being at Noman. Um, but also, uh, it's it's about the, how you're applying yourself outside of the class. Um, so when it comes to distance learning, you know that that remains the same. You're going to be outside of your class. You're going to be putting your hours in. And as Zach mentioned, if you've got that sculpture at home. You're not having to drive it back and forth to campus. You it's just always there, available for you to put the work in. So as we've all discovered in quarantine. Um, there's trade-offs, right? There's things that become less convenient in quarantine, but there's also things that become more convenient um, in that kind of situation. And I know that all of our instructors are working very hard to make sure that our, our students continue to have a robust experience um, of the classroom. And as Zach said, definitely check out that video on the homepage. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't interrupt. I was just going to make a point too. The, I, we've talked about it, but similar to on-campus courses, the online uh, uh, equivalents are, are still capped to 18 students or less. Um, you would think that an online class would allow for just everybody, but it, it's kind of maintaining that, that teacher inst instructor or instructor students uh, relationship uh, as close to one-on-one -on -one as possible is very important. I think that doesn't get lost in the translation of the online method. Uh, and I think that's why classes like character sculpture can still be taught from a distance the way they are. 
Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, that's, that's the other thing that is really great about Nomen is this class size is small enough that everybody gets the time of the instructor. Everybody gets the interaction that they need. Um, and as well, I believe our, you know, our foundation students also have access to um, our academic mentorship um, from, from our education leads and, and, and from instructors while they're a part of that program, even online, you've got access to that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a really invaluable resource too. Is uh, AMC, as it's abbreviated, but our Academic Mentoring Center is a, a means for students to um, get some uh, instruction or, or tutoring, uh, more or less, outside of class time. It's a great tool to use if students feel like they're falling behind. Maybe they a certain class is just has a steep steep. Uh, steeper learning curve than some of the other ones they're taking, and they they want to get a little bit of additional kind of feedback. Um, that's a great um, resource as well. They can make an appointment and, and have a one-on-one -on -one session with a, a, a education uh, lead from AMC or an instructor. Um, and so, yeah, it's certainly a resource that's available for uh, for foundation students. And um, yeah, there's a number of online resources as well. I mean, a number of um, um, uh, aspects of Nomen that are accessible and um, can help students to just get the most out of their education. Absolutely. Um, let's see. I think we've got it, it actually great, great work, Zach. You've I, I've just heard from our, our producer that you've been answering people's questions in the chat just in context of what you've been talking about um, as they've been coming up. So oh, we've cool. actually covered, covered a lot that's come in, um, but I think we've got a couple more here. Let me just take a quick look. Oh no, you no, you're good. You just addressed the international question. So um, one question that we've we have addressed in different forms in context of our conversation, but I think it's it's maybe good to just address it directly because I know it's sure. something people want to know. Um, how do I know if I need to take the FIAD or the Foundation in Art and Design coming into Nomen? Yeah, I think it is dependent on the person. So I think what the best place to start is just to talk to admissions. We can schedule a one-on-one -on -one call, Skype, whatever it might be. Um, you can email us is, is, is a great method too. And, and, uh, if students, uh, want to share a little bit about a, a bit about their kind of creative background or educational background, that's a good place to start. And, um, what, what, uh, what me and my colleagues in admissions do is just kind of provide all the information that students can use and make an informed decision about whether or not it's the right fit. And then sometimes it's not, sometimes students have a really strong knowledge of foundation and they might be ready to apply for the BFA if, if ultimately that's what they want to do or the, or the two-year certificate program um, it just depends and uh, we uh, we don't um, shy away from telling students what, what we think would be best but it's ultimately of course up to everybody um, on, on an individual basis and, and I think um, the decision to take foundation is uh, is one that is um, informed by a lot of information and uh, it's it starts with a conversation whether it's email or phone or whatever it might be so if uh, if students aren't sure and if they're kind of on the fence um, it's good just to have a conversation and kind of um, be able to share any any links resources and things that might be helpful to make a decision about that um, but of course there's there's students in which that's not the, the right path forward um, and um, so it just depends depends on the student yeah, and, and yet another really important reason why it's so important to make that conversation with admissions your first step um, right. as, you're, as you're looking into Nomen, because uh, uh, Zach and his colleagues really their their role is to be very available to you and to kind of be that lifeline um, for you to Nomen to get the questions answered to figure out the best strategic path for you towards our programs. Um, a couple other questions, um, you know, that have that have come up over time and talking with people. Um, can I take the, the foundation in art and design as a way to prepare for the two year certificate? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, it's, um, it's not uh, unheard of. Certainly, there's been students that have gone through a foundation um, and have successfully been accepted or been accepted into the two-year certificate program. Um, it's worth mentioning too the two programs, the two full-time programs. Their ultimate aim is to prepare students for careers in the entertainment industry. Um, one is uh, the, the BFA, of course, being a one that has GE courses associated with it. There's a little bit of a, a longer transitionary period, um, and so because of that, the two-year program is thought of as more advanced um, because it just gets right into the digital production type classes right away. So because of that, the portfolio threshold is slightly higher for the certificate program. That's sort of why it's it's worth kind of talking about it as a foundation is is, um, is great to prepare for either, I would say. But um, this kind of brings up an interesting question too about um, just if a student's work is really strong, um, really relevant, and, and hits all of the points we mentioned, create, creative and technically proficient and all of that. 
Um, that's another conversation that, that in admissions we can have about uh, which program would be best fit for them. That's a kind of another consideration um, given their goal, uh, given their at least backgrounds. Um, we mentioned a little bit about software, and I think although it's not necessary to have um, 3D work in one's portfolio, a lot of Nomad's curriculum is, is 3D production oriented. So it's still great to kind of practice this. And if it's something that students are um, already kind of passionate about, uh, it's, it's great to simultaneously, while one's in, enrolled in foundation, to kind of practice these various software and things that hopefully are of interest to students. And, and if you're not sure, if a student's not sure, it's a good way to gauge kind of independently to pick up some tutorials, download a software, um, and uh, Blender, Maya, um, whatever it might be. Um, it's actually not as important, I think, um, which particular software, although there is a number of software professional um, uh, studio-specific uh, software that are taught at Nomen. Um, kind of any experience that one can bring into the program is going to be very helpful. It helps to make informed decisions. It helps to make a really strong portfolio sometimes. Um, I think with the two-year certificate program, those are th questions that come up uh, even more so, but with both. Um, so knowledge of, of uh, um, certain certain things like 3D production would be good, um, To and, and that's something that one can practice on their own. Uh, again, it's it's dependent on the person. Um, some students, rather than taking the length of foundation, might find that it's more beneficial for them. Perhaps they have a full-time work schedule to take a single class, and maybe they can choose one of the classes from foundation, or they can take a, a, a different 3D production class to kind of bridge that gap a little bit. Uh, it really just depends. Uh, we, we mentioned the benefits of foundation as a bundle being more cost-effective than individually, um, but it still is can be the right decision, obviously, to pursue individual courses for students, and they can select classes that maybe are outside of foundation in addition to that. That's less common, but sometimes students have taken a, a term of foundation and then added a 3D production class on top of it. Um, that's a lot. That's a, technically a full-time kind of term, but... Um, there's a number of possibilities, and it really is dependent on the person. And uh, and that's really our, our role is to help students figure that out and to make a, a, the appropriate decision. Absolutely. There's also students out there that are getting their general ed classes out of the way at community college while taking a, an individual class or two at Noman. Definitely. Um, so there's yeah. ways to, to mix and match in that sense as well. Zach, you brought up a really good point um, that actually we touched on in our recent stream with our uh, – education lead and uh, VFX artist, Bo Jansen. Um, a lot of questions are coming up about uh, software, for example, Blender these days. Mm -hmm. uh, Blender is a rapidly growing uh, kit. It's, it's you know, features are, are robust and, and it's free. So it's, it's uh, definitely makes sense. There's a lot of people out there using Blender. Um, but what can happen is, you know, you use one piece of software, you get very invested. You know, you've spent hours and countless hours learning it and learning how to use that. So you can become very attached to it. So a lot of times questions come up like, well, you know, why doesn't Noman teach Blender? Or, you know, if I know a lot of Blender, is that going to help me? Um, at the end of the day, uh, you want to work in the industry. Um, a big part of that is being able to understand how to learn software. Right. Um, so investing a lot of time in learning 3D through a, three, a free package like Blender is very helpful because you're learning 3D and the principles of 3D are going to remain the same. Uh, the way you go about getting a particular software to do that and the shortcut keys or whatever may be different from one to the other. But if you're spending a lot of time in a free resource like Blender and then you're going to come to Noman to learn Maya, it's, of course, going to help you. Um, and then the question about, well, you know, did I waste my time learning something because I have to relearn a different software? No, because you're going to be doing that for the rest of your career um, if, you were, if you're going to work in digital yep. production. And it's that actually is a... Yeah. It's a big plus for people working in the industry who can come in and say, well, yeah, I can learn that because I know that I can learn software quickly. Um, I've had to do it before. Um, if you could, uh, I think in closing, um, last two things would be really good to touch on. Uh, number one, the the deadline for uh, the next start of our foundation in art and design is a week from today, I believe. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah. 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 So um, the deadline's coming up. Can you, and I know that, of course, the application process to the foundation is is not as intensive as for the full-time program, but with that deadline in a week in mind, anybody that's considering doing it, could you just unpack really quickly what, you know, for someone who maybe is hearing about, has heard about foundation or is hearing about it for the first time today and is going, you know what, I think I do want to take that next term. Can you tell us really quickly what that process would be like? 
Absolutely. Yeah, the deadline is August 28th, and so um, give or take a week. Um, the process, firstly, would, would include uh, on Noman's website, there is a link for foundation. Under um, the a academics, there's a, a foundation um, link, and then um, students can enroll that way, essentially. Just, uh, you'll fill out a registration form, um, and then you'll have to, uh, students will have to submit their transcripts. Uh, there's instructions for that on, on Noman's website as well. Uh, and we can, of course, help with the specifics of that if students have questions on that front. Um, one, one, one uh, a particular note about that is if it's a, if, if a student's international, applying as an international student, the transcript would require an evaluation, which similarly we can, we can assist with kind of figuring out how to do that and go about that. It's just an additional step. And then um, after the transcripts have been received, then um, Noman's admissions advisors will reach out to students and um, schedule the interview. And um, really, I mean, students can are welcome to talk to admissions anytime. I mean, prior to registering for foundation, of course, you don't have to wait to register or, or apply to for a program to talk to admissions. It's very important to note too. Um, but um, but there's an official uh, official uh, interview step uh, at the end of the registration process, and um, that is uh, typically done over the phone um, or Skype, certainly with uh, the lockdown at the moment. And um, we'll cover a number of points just to kind of make sure students are in the right place, get a sense of what their um, aims are, um, and to also just introduce ourselves as advisors so that students know we're available and can help make a strategy for the next steps. Um, and so that's pretty much it. There's three steps uh, for the for foundation registration. And, um, and then uh, ultimately students will be placed in classes and uh, they will begin to um, start their journey in, in foundational training and, and entertainment arts. And uh, so that is, uh, that's more or less um, the process. It's fairly quick, I would say. Absolutely. So not a very painful process. And of course, um, uh, Zach and his colleagues are there to help you through it. Um, they're there to make sure that you don't get stuck anywhere um, and that, you know, you can, you can go after what you're going after. Um, and then uh, I wanted to also uh, mention, so if they just go to the website and they initiate, like I want to apply for the foundation art design from the website, that will automatically put them in touch with admissions. So an admissions advisor will be reaching out to them. Is that correct? Oh, that's correct. Yeah. It, they, might, they might register on their own and then ultimately admissions will, will be notified of that and will we'll initiate the conversation either way. Yeah. And then if you want to speak with admissions, as Zach had mentioned, you're not necessarily ready to, to say, I want to apply right away, but you want to talk to someone before as you're making that consideration, mm -hmm. or you just want to get some portfolio coaching and you want to talk about what options might be best for you at Noman. Um, you also can just fill out a digital contact card. Um, uh, Xander will share that in the chat. Um, just share a link. It takes you to a very quick um, form you can fill out online. And what that's going to do is that is going to go through to admissions and they will be sending you an email uh, within in, within the next 24 hours or so. What I will say to you um, is if you are expecting to hear something from admissions um, and you don't think that you have, uh, that doesn't mean that admissions has not reached out to you. It means that more than likely that email, unfortunately, was routed by your server to your spam folder um, in your email. Um, and that is something that we are always paying attention to and, and working very hard to prevent from happening. Uh, so if you have um, you know, applied or if you have reached out to admissions by filling out the contact card and you want to speak to one of them, uh, just keep an eye on your spam folder or your junk mail folder because unfortunately, sometimes it can wind up there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially it. Uh, people are always going to hear back from Noman if they reach out to us. There's no reason why we would not, uh, communicate with you. And I wanted to make sure that you understand that. And also just to reiterate that our admissions advisors are available to you. Um, you do not have to be, um, in an application process or enrolled or anything like that. You can simply speak with admissions at Noman, uh, if you have questions and you just need to know more. Um, before you would consider applying to a program or something like that. So uh, Zach and his other colleagues are totally available to you. Please do reach out if you want to and just pay attention for that email coming in. Um, and uh, you know we're always here to assist you. You can, um, you can of course, uh, call the Doman phone number and you will be able to ask for the department that you want to speak to. Um, if you want to uh, just speak to someone about Noman, uh, you can ask for admissions. Um, you can ask for me if you want, Adam Hartel. I'm a recruiter here at Noma. I'd be happy to even set up a one-on-one -on -one conversation via Zoom or something like that. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that we are 100% available to you, uh, depending on what it is that you want to talk about and learn about. Uh, so with that said, uh, Zach, I just want to say again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be on the stream with me. Oh, thank um, you for having me. 
too. Yeah, it, I think in closing, is there any, you know, it's kind of like your opportunity to, you're talking to the world essentially. Um, are there any parting words or advice that you'd like to say to aspiring artists out there as we wrap up? Just that uh, it's it's a journey. So expect to, um, expect that it's going to be um, a lot of work, but, but it's really, really um rewarding. And uh, I just want to wish everybody the best, wish everybody good luck. Uh, I know when you see awesome work, it can seem intimidating, but those artists obviously had to start somewhere. And uh, it's you'll, you'll find if, if this is the, the route for you, that, that you're passionate about it, that you're, you'll be one of those people just as long as you put in enough time and, and effort and work. And uh, hopefully that's uh, certainly something that, that I can help with uh, if you uh, in the future if we have the privilege of talking. Um, but I just want to wish everybody the best. Keep, keep making work. Keep a sketchbook. Draw every day. Um, do whatever you can. And that's going to be a good recipe for success in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Zach. Well, um, I also want to say thank you to Miranda Harrington, our social media manager at Noman, who has been producing uh, the stream uh, behind the scenes today and keeping everything running for us. I also want to say, uh, please save the date uh, for Noman's first virtual open house coming up on Sunday, September the 20th. Yes, we are doing a socially distanced open house. This is something that's been requested quite a bit uh, for people. So what this will be is something that's more robust than our virtual info sessions we've been streaming on Twitch. Um, it will also be including hearing from uh, admissions, hearing about financial aid. We're also looking into putting together a panel of uh, alumni artists. Uh, so it's gonna be a great opportunity for you uh, to learn everything you need to know about Nomen, um, to have an opportunity to ask questions in the chat uh, specifically to admissions advisors or specifically about financial aid um, and so forth. So that will be coming up on Sunday, September the 20th. So please save the date. Follow us on social media to learn more about that event and other events that we're going to be doing and content that we're going to be streaming. Um, we'd also like to invite you to join us for our next Spotlight stream. Um, that's going to be Getting Started in Games with Education Lead Anton Napurella. Uh, that's going to be next Friday, August 28th at 11 a.m. right here um, on our, our channels. Um, so if you want to hear about what Nomen is doing to train artists for careers specifically working in games, uh, definitely tune into that one. And Anton is going to be sharing with us about our curriculum. He's going to be talking about some of the work that he has done as well as an artist um, and helping to provide uh, whatever clarity you might need to know how you can train for uh, the industry and working in games at Nomen. Um, and so with that, guys, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please do follow and subscribe on whatever platform you're seeing us stream on. Um, that could be uh, Twitch, that could be Facebook um, or YouTube. As well, if you go to our YouTube channel, we have um, playlists organized of, I think it's over 100 events now, 100 streams that um, we have cataloged and organized by subject. Uh, on our YouTube channel. So that is a library that's available to you to watch for free, um, where you can hear from top industry artists behind some of your favorite films and games, talking about what they do, talking about the state of the industry, and um, talking about techniques and workflows that they use um, in their disciplines. So guys, thanks again for being here today. My name's Adam Hartel. It's been my pleasure to be your host. Uh, stay safe and stay creative, and we'll see you back here on the stream in the